Good morning, everyone. This is Ashley Chia. Welcome Why do you sound to- like that? What do you, do you want so me to stank? sound like? Oh my God. Are you happy to be here or no? Hi, everybody. Mm-hmm. It's Ashley here. Hi, boys yum, and girls. Yum. Yes. Thank you. So good. <laughs> Ice cream. cream. So yum. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it went, went from one end to the next quick. Can't with that. Good morning, everybody. This is Ashley Sarachia, Ashley Sarah Nicole Chia, to be exact. I am a mother of four daughters. And, you know, we're here in the mama's den. Fifi's not here again, but she will be back soon. Ladies. Shout out to Fee. Hey, this is Ooh. Melanie Fiona, mother of two. Cameron, seven. Kaya, almost two. Um, I'm a cancer, cancer Sagittarius. Girl. Shout out. <laughs> Cody here, mom to the three boys, Brooks, Aristotle, and Langston. Brooks is seven, and the babies, I mean... Formerly known as the babies. Yes, formerly known as the babies, which I almost made them known as. Um, Aristotle and Langston will be five very soon. Why you always give all their names and ages? I never do that, and then I feel bad. Not never. And you know, we do it. I only do it when A1, y'all do A2, it. I just A3, said I have four kids. A4. I, 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 have I, I four went to, rogue. Uh, I was the one who implemented First of all, don't be referencing my kids as one, two, three, four. <laughs> their names are Amira Lee, Azara Lee, Asia Lee, Asia Lee, and Natalia Lee. Why all Lee? Oh, Chia's middle name is Lee. Oh, cute. And my name is Ashley. Oh. We were meant to be. Did you know Go ahead, get your my Chris Kardashian on. have the same middle name? You said what? Chris Jenner. All of my sons have the same middle name. What is her middle name? Edward. Oh, that's Tommy's middle name, right? Mm-hmm. See, that's why I did that too. Chia. And, you're, and your middle name is an E as well. It is. It was meant to be. See? CEOs. Li- alignment. Yes. Yes. Okay, guys. So today, I want to share a post that I saw. And I was like, oh, this is cute. We should talk about it. Okay. Okay, so Cherise Sims, we know, mama of six. Okay, shout out to Cherise. So Cherise is helping me parent. Oh, Word. To be honest. On the daily. On the daily. Because she's a mama of six and an educator. Mm-mm. So she be knowing. So good. Child. Okay, so Cherie shared a post from, okay, let me actually give a little credit, attachmentnerd.com, okay? And it was, if you want to have a secure relationship with your children, no matter their age, you need to do these five things. And so I thought it was cute. And I was, well, not just cute. I thought it was like, oh, this is interesting. And so I'm curious, like, for each of the things. Like, do you do the things? Do you want to be better at the things? Do you think the things are stupid? What are so, the things? Yeah. Not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes you read stuff and you're like, oh, this is dumb. Hug your kid. <laughs> Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So number one, oh, I like this one because Michelle Obama says this. Light up when they enter the room. Why? As attachment creatures, our children need to feel that we want them around and delight in their presence. It becomes a core part of their identity and self-worth and cultivates trust in our relationship to them. I feel like yes, and also it's a little stupid. Oop. Carry on. I'm going to be controversial here. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Here's the thing. I think that we're big on greetings, I think, in my family. We always have been. Like, when we come home, we hug each other and kiss each other. Mm -hmm. Good nights are always kisses and hugs. Good mornings are always kisses and hugs. We're very big at greeting each other and saying good morning. There's There's also, I think, a psychology to the other side of, like, making your children think that everyone is supposed to be like, oh! And when people don't, you've arrived. Yeah, like, and when people don't, then like their worth is not like something. It's just no, like, yeah. Sometimes it's just like, hey, what's up? Mm -hmm. Like, I just saw Mm -hmm. you ten seconds ago. Yeah, you know, like I love Mm -hmm. you no less, but Mm -hmm. you just came back from the bathroom. That doesn't require to me a, you know, a a celebration every single time. You just want to delight in their presence. You know what I mean? And and to be honest, I just feel like the more kids you have, Ashley. You could just gonna be like, hey, oh, hi, all the time. It's like, fair, um, fair. You know, well, that's how I have for kids. But, but, oh, 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 oh my gosh. god! <laughs> and let the record show. That's um, so th- she's so that's, not wrong. So I, I would like to know if there's like more context behind it because j- that is a blanketed statement to me. It's there's just never too more context Here's on what Instagram. I'll say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think at the, the end of the day, comments. I think at the end of the day, context is is what it is. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so I think your point is totally valid. I think the first time I heard this was with Michelle Obama. Mama, the light we carry she had a book in the podcast right and she like as first lady made a point to like show joy whenever she met a child oh sweet and she, and she used an example from like her own kids that like and and it's more than just like smiling and being happy every time they walk in the room she was talking about how there was an example of her one of her kids coming in and the first thing she said was like oh that shirt is wrinkled like you need to fix it before we go to da 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 and so she intentionally sort of changed her behavior to like happy to see you or happy to that you're dressed on time or whatever like acknowledging like the joy in 
and seeing her daughter yes. before correcting her. That and is And I was important. like, I like that. Because we can definitely be very, you know, especially mm-hmm. in the morning, we're trying mm-hmm. to get ready for school. Like, where is your this and where is your that yeah. if we're seeing them for the first time? No, I a thousand percent agree. Also, because having a teenager, I can you can instantly see their face change. Mm-hmm. Like when they walk out in their dress and the first thing, you know, why, why is your whole stomach out? Or why? <laughs> <laughs> Poor baby. Um, but that's really what my conversations are now. Yeah. Like, um, you have too much body showing. Like, yeah. pick one or the other, legs or stomach. Um, so it's I noticed lesson. that even it's with good, ch- yeah gauge yeah yeah legs are stunning that not what everyone has no. I've been like that since high school for sure yeah I, t- I tell her that this is too much it's too much at one time at 14 pick one or the other or just have your ear up um, that's what I prefer show a little shoulder right <laughs> just a little eyelash <laughs> um, but with Chia specifically too being their father I'm always like make sure the first interaction you have with them of the day of the yeah, day is yeah. love and give them a hug in case before you start on your daddy rampage. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but it's funny because Bluey has become my favorite cartoon in the entire world. Okay, I had I, never heard of this before. Girl, I wish that it. I, like, I have so much creative jealousy when it comes to that show. Like, I wish I would have created that cartoon. Hmm. The episodes are absolutely amazing. And there's one where the kids are playing and she goes to complain to her mom and she's like, um, it's Bluey and Bingo, they're sisters. And so she's like, Bingo's not um, playing right because she says she doesn't want to, they're playing mailman. She doesn't want to deliver the mail because she's special. And so her mom was like, well, I mean, well, she is special. And she was like, no, she said she's the most special child in the whole world. And so the mom goes over to her and she's like, Bingo, you are special to me and your dad, but literally no one else. So mm-hmm. if you're going to play, you need to play by the rules. And I was like, yo, like th- these kind <laughs> Yeah, this is yeah, the best yeah. cartoon in the whole world because to Mel's point, if you kind of overindulge in your yeah. children, they become entitled and they lose like that sensibility of realizing like everybody's not going to be delighted in your presence. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I think there's a difference. The middle ground is the first interaction of the day you have with your children should be of love. Or even like the school pickup. Yes. Right? You haven't seen them in several yes. hours. A I thousand percent. I, I'm into it. Yeah. But throughout the day, no, you don't. Every time they walk <laughs> in a room, we do not need to do that. But mm-hmm. if I'm just seeing you, it should be like hey, good morning, I love you, versus did you clean your room, dude? Like, right, you're yeah, not even right. acknowledging them. Word. The first word is just, like, criticism. And also, too, that goes for the kids because sometimes I show up to Cam's Girl. school and I go to pick him up, tell mm-hmm. them kids, and he'll be like, Ugh. Yep. And I will literally stand there from a distance and look at him and be like, oh, word, that's how you're going to greet me in front of your friends? <laughs> See? And I stand I stand back and I'm like, all right. And then he catches himself and he comes over and gives me a hug. Aww. And I'm just like, yep. we're not doing this. This goes two ways. You yeah. know what I mean? So... At the same point, at the same, at the same point, it's like, okay, light up when you see me. Even even hearing you say that, both of you actually made me think about husbands. Mm. I could give Tommy a little light up sometimes. Listen, the good kind. This this is his ass up because I'm mad about something. This is actually like a huge um, practice in marriage and relationships and, Mm. and, and how, like my therapist, we talk about this all the time. And honestly, I talked about this the other day with my homegirl. You know that song by Alicia Keys, Like You'll Never See Me Again? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I've i always loved that song, but now more so in appreciation of using it as a practice. Mm. If I'm going to hold you, if I'm going to kiss you, if I'm going to say goodbye to you, I'm going to do it like it's the last time. Mm. Yeah. Because nothing is promised. And truly, like, whatever is going on, like, we never want to feel like, oh, I should have, I didn't. And I just feel like we forget sometimes that we are in love. And that goes with our children. Mm, That goes with our partners, our friends. Like leaving things on bad terms or with things, like, you know, not Mm -hmm. saying that everything has to go perfect all the time. But having that in the back of your mind, I think, always keeps a presence of what is actually important in the moment. And so back to that point, it it goes in our relationships. I want to double down on that, though. Mm -hmm. We will get to the other things, but it's so important that you said that, but I think that goes into the practice of also knowing the end goal, right? So like, I know that the goal for me every day is a consciousness is I want to be married and I want to stay married. Mm -hmm. So in within those interactions of knowing when he leaves the house, no matter how mad I am, Mm -hmm. I know that I'm not going to be that mad later on. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's from losing my sister, but that always is a consciousness of me. Like we all, like yesterday when I was leaving, um, to the girls by and they were sitting down and I said, can you get up and give me a hug Bye. Right. And Azar was like, Mom, you're coming back. I said, You don't know that. Mm-hmm. I said, I would love to come home. 
but you do not know that. Mm -hmm. Like, give me a hug every time that I leave. And that, I'm like that with my mom, with any, you know, I always hug y'all, mm -hmm. but I always hug people, tell them I love them, give Chia yeah. a kiss every morning and a hug. Like, when I wake up, he's like in the zone with the kids and I'll turn him around and be like, good morning, mm -hmm. I love you. And mm -hmm. we hug each other. Yeah. Because those connections, like that first interaction, if you don't, you could get up and just start getting a flow of things and yeah. turn around like, dang, I ain't hugged my husband in three mm -hmm. days. And that's where those disconnects start to happen. And the same thing with your children. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry. Okay, number two. No, no. <laughs> let's, let's, let's do it. Um, okay, it says, be highly responsive with their feelings. Hmm. We are social creatures wired to co-regulate. Our children need to borrow the calmness of our nervous system and the compassion on our faces to feel seen, heard, felt, and cared for. When they are tender, we need to show up and offer them soothing. Hmm. Why don't you answer that first? <laughs> do you, I Cody? agree? Do I agree? Well, I will say this is probably how I am. Okay. Mm. Has it served me well? Mm. <laughs> you know, I think that when I it's read this, package. I certainly identify with, I have made this choice, right? Mm -hmm. But I would say having made the choice, it's just as important to know when to give them the tough love. Mm. Like, I think there's a balance. I think that they're not wrong. Because mm -hmm. I think the alternate, if tough love was all you gave, then this is a great thing to read, right? right, right. But... For me, I probably need to do more of the tough love at times. Middle ground. Yeah, than, than this. I'm already here. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I would also challenge the term tough love. I'm starting mm -hmm. to like rethink the way we say things, even like tomboy, right? Because yeah. there's words that insinuate that when you put that other word in front of it, that it is mm -hmm. like the opposite of, right? Yeah. So that's why I kind of like don't like being called a tomboy because I'm like, I'm a girl. No matter what I do is girly. If I have a bag of pants or like you don't, I did, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like you're yeah. identifying as something being only one way. Yeah. And so everything else is other than that. Love is tough. Love is not just letting things go. Love is holding people responsible yeah. it is yeah. holding people love, accountable love. that is real okay, love word. yeah so I would say all of those things yes I'm mm. in the same with you like loving them in all of its com complexity yeah in their feelings mm -hmm. and acknowledging them and pushing them to be better yeah. and showing them how to handle and deal with their emotions yeah. in a healthy way we talked mm -hmm. about this because I brought up Cameron mm -hmm. and like how I've been finding that I have to parent him differently now that he's seven mm -hmm. and he holds on to, he's naturally an emotionally intelligent and very sensitive child. Right. And so this is something that I've always honored and, you know, right. protected. But I also recognize that there's a level of like callous he also needs to build to for himself to be able to regulate. Like he was telling me the other day, he got upset and he was crying at school and he was like, my teacher didn't even check on me. I don't think she cares. And I was like, ah, ah, ah. I was like, here's a situation. Your teacher has 20 other students to care for. And I was like, you've done this before. So she knows you're going to be okay. You have to figure out how to regulate your emotions in that moment. And I'm like, mommy and daddy, when we're at home, I was like, we care about your feelings. We check on you. But also, dude, there's just certain things. I said, you know, sometimes you see how mommy has to walk away and just let you figure it out because that's just what has to happen. So to that point, mm -hmm. I feel like I am finding the middle ground right now in my life as well with my son specifically mm -hmm. to be more like, okay, I see you. I acknowledge you. I'm not going to go down into the well of emotions with you, <laughs> but I will be here when you come back. If you want to talk about it. Yeah. 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 Word. <laughs> Word. Mm -hmm. All right. Numero tres. <clears throat> Care more about the why than the what. Mm. Our children need us to care more about the why beneath their behavior than we care about getting them to act a certain way. When we help them learn about their internal states, we help them feel close to us and we help them develop maturity without trauma. I like those words. Agreed. I like this very much. I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I've, I've come to do this with definitely with my children, but also in all of my relationships mm -hmm. in general. Like I've always been low key, like psychology, figuring out why people do what they do. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that came from you that like, yeah. I thrive in that space. And I think it's what helps me be a good partner, good friend, all of it. Some people don't like that, yeah. mm -hmm. but I definitely do with my children, especially Cameron right now. Cause I'm trying to figure out some of those things. Like, why do you do that? And I look for the through line and yeah. things. I actually yeah. started keeping a log like yeah. on a certain day. Why did he act like this? Okay. Did he eat a breakfast? Did he feel comfortable? Oh. Did something happen at school? Because I'm trying to get to that. Yeah. So I, I agree with that a hundred percent. Yeah. I, when I look <clears throat> at it too, I think where I get frustrated because I absolutely believe in it is like they're still kids. So sometimes I never get that why out. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. I'm like, but why though? <laughs> what yeah. about you? Also, sometimes it's just DNA. Why? Because you just like your daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's programmed in you. <laughs> um, 
I, you know, what's interesting. I, I do always care about the why, you know, I love a little history. Mm-hmm. Um, I always want to know the root of everything, yeah. but there's also a space of, it's funny because Chia is like a explainer. Mm hmm of behavior. So whenever we get into a disagreement, he always wants to over explain why he did something in the reasoning. And sometimes I honestly, Interesting. girl, but sometimes I just don't care. Like I'm like, but you did it. And I don't honestly always care about the why, like just stop doing it. Like mm. you figure that out on your own. So there's a, to me, there is a balance of that, especially with children, because then they become those type of adults who feel like every time they do something, let me explain to you why I did it. Mm. And like, it somehow justifies the behavior. Well, it's still in, it's still mm. in how you address it. Yes. You can ask why and they might tell you why and you can say, okay, well, yeah. your choice in that moment based on your why was a bad choice. Yes. So I am, I'm, I, I don't know what you would call it, but when they do things, I think I lead with what they did first. And then we talk mm. about why, like, well, what Fair. you did was inappropriate yes. right. and we're not going to, okay. I don't care why you did it. That actually is not okay. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Because there's yeah. a why to everything. Why people bomb people do all sorts of horrific things. Everybody got a reason. Their mama didn't love them. Da, 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 da. Like there's sure. always a reason why. Sometimes it has to be like knowing what is and is an appropriate behavior and then going back to the why, like, okay, well, how do we get here? Mm-hmm. But I, I'm really, I, I will stand 10 toes down on like some shit is just not okay. And we're yeah, not going to no, do that. Right. I don't care why. Cause I'm tired every day. So I could just go cuss everybody out. It well, doesn't make why. it okay to know why I'm not, I don't that, think that by part. any stretch it makes it okay. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I yes. think it just helps you learn your child sure. in that mm-hmm. moment For and sure. gives you an opportunity to course correct. Yes. Because you're not just saying don't ever you know, hit your brother again, Mm -hmm. you're saying like, don't ever, you know, take your anger out, you you know, violently or with Mm -hmm. your, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah. Word. (laughs) (laughs) I love this. Okay. Attachment nerd. Um, be the leader in repair. This is number four. We all get out of sync with our children. Sometimes that rupture is driven by them and sometimes it's driven by us. Either way, they need us to model the process of repair, to forego our need to be right or in control and to value the work of listening, understanding, and bringing the relationship back into connection. Yeah. Agreed. I would agree with that a thousand percent. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but it's hard to. I feel like I find those moments where like... It, sometimes it happens quickly where like I should have just been like, oh, I'm sorry mm-hmm. that I said that. And instead it's just like, OK, well, get the get the backpack so we can go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and so looking up and kind of realizing when I do it and not addressing it, I get annoyed with myself. Yeah. But I do totally agree with mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. You can always run it back, too. I feel yeah, like yeah. it doesn't always happen in the moment. But like at nighttime, you could be like, you know what, baby, I was thinking about mm-hmm. this morning and da 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 da, which also t- teaches them the same thing. Yes. Like Reflection. always run it back. Yep. Check your work, Cameron. <laughs> Check your work. That's been my my line all week. Check, oh, your, work. check your work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How often do you feel like you actually, do you feel like you course correct in that way all the time? I do. I do. Yeah. For I a try thousand to, percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Especially with my husband. Like that is a great practice for us. I think that's what keeps us going, child, is the course correction. Mm-hmm. I always apologize to my children. It is so hard, but the more you do it, it becomes mm-hmm. easier and easier. Mm-hmm. It's pride and ego. That's all not apologizing is, is pride and ego. And once you start to master that, you realize like this feeling that I have, that's my ego. It's not love. It's not, it's, it's, you know, this need to be righteousness or yeah. whatever. That's, <laughs> that's the feeling we fight every time we don't want to apologize yeah. to somebody. But yeah. I have never had an issue apologizing or admitting when I'm wrong with friends, with mm-hmm. my kids. Like, it's my mom made me be that way. She would not make excuses for my behavior ever as a kid. Like, if I got in trouble at school, she would come to school. She would listen to both sides and mm-hmm. she would be like, okay, Ashley, going back to the other one, like, what you did was inappropriate. I understand that these things happen, but yeah. you should have called me. You should have went to the principal. Like, there's an appropriate way to do things. You can't yeah. just punch people in the face every time they piss you off. You can. But I, well, I did. It's not a good idea. Yeah, so. it's not, but I did it. Understand. Never regret it. Man. But I don't do it now. How often <laughs> How often did you punch somebody in the face? Oh, I got in a fight every day in first grade. But people were calling me nigger and tar baby in every day. I mean, that's grade. worth fighting. I, I thought so. So what are we talking about? These I people deserve to get punched. <laughs> right, but 100%. to be fair, violence only begets more violence, whether it be verbal or physical. So it did not help anything because I said it happened every day. Yeah. So I was just becoming more and more aggressive. It wasn't helping me. You know, my mom took me out of that situation, but also I had to learn to use my words. Yeah, like, you know what fair, I mean? Fair point. And some people were just hell bent on making your life horrible. So you need to <clears throat> remove yourself from them. Word. <laughs> 
Okay. It says, do your own work. Parenting is not just about helping our children grow and learn. It's about our own continued development process, developmental process. Our children guide us toward parts of ourselves we need to heal and address. We honor them when we let them challenge us, inspire us, and ultimately invite us into personal growth, personal and relational growth. Interestingly, that's like relationships, period. Like, Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that they're calling this out with regard to our children, but like, this is certainly relationships. I, I've been saying this a lot lately because people ask about, um, I don't know, what I learned from black love or whatever. But like from from the experience of like interviewing 200 plus couples, like and people always saying, what is uh, uh, marriage is work. And to me, what I've learned is the work is the work that you're willing to do on yourself. Mm. Like it is not simply couples therapy or whatever, mm-hmm. but it's like the work that you're willing to put in on you. And so it's interesting that they bring this up. With regard to kids. Ding, 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 ding. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed. I already told you in another episode. I'm in therapy because I want to be the best version of myself for my daughter. I yeah. love that. I just, I have to be. Just, I see it. Why do you see for her specifically? Because she's so much. It's interesting. Cameron is very much like me. But I think seeing her fire and knowing that that actually gets that for me. Mm-hmm. I know that there's a way that she she's going, I'm going to need to show up for her mm-hmm. by allowing her to burn bright, but also preventing her from burning the house down. Mm. You understand what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like, And so if I resort to what I experienced growing up with fire, mm. I don't want that for her, you know? Yeah. I don't want that for her. I want, I want to be able to... Um, encourage and guide and be, be, be a part of it rather than control the fire, mm-hmm. you know? And so that mm. becomes innate in us like for example I was talking to my girlfriend today she's got my, one of my best friends well she is my best friend and her daughter is 23 and I sent this to you Ash it was a, a post that said your teen is mad at you mm-hmm. not because they're mad at you it's because they are mad and need some place to be mad at and mm-hmm. you're the safest option mm-hmm. and I was talking to her about that and she was saying oh absolutely she's like I tell my daughter all the time, do you know that it is a gift that you have a mother that can hold space for you to Mm. be off, go off, feel what you have to feel, let it out, do it here. I I have space for that. She's like, but there's days that I might not. Mm. And I'm gonna let you know, but I'm your mom. You need to figure it out, figure it out on me because you can't go out into the world and just blow up on everybody. You also can't disrespect me, but I also understand you need a place to do that. And I thought about that and I was like, that's very, very poignant because- Mm -hmm. It's, it's really, it's really true. And so sometimes in those moments where I grew up being like, you know, feeling like my mom was just like, this blasted child is so disrespectful. She has no disrespect. Like, it's like, yes, there are times when I was being disrespectful, but there were also times when I just didn't have an outlet. And so wanting your, your parents sometimes it's just like, no, I'll, I will, I can sometimes have to take the hit because I can have the, I can hold that space for you. And so the only way you can hold that space for your children is if you have the space You've created it. Mm-hmm. You've worked on it. You have made it for yourself. Yeah. Because as a parent, you do need that. You need that for yourself and your children. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that requires a lot of, like, maturity and self-awareness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really interesting to me. And though. by the way, my my best friend had her daughter at 18. Wow. So, you know, I think for her, too, there was a large part of I'm learning at the same time. I'm also growing up while raising somebody. Yeah. And so she got to this very wise place at a young age mm-hmm. of watching her child, seeing herself and her daughter at a young age and having the wisdom to say, oh, I need to do more work. And she really did. Like, that's shout, beautiful, shout out though. to my best friend. She's she's my guru. She always has been. Yeah. No, that's dope. Even to be a young mom and to be there, because obviously some of our parents are not there and they no. had us at older ages so yeah. for her it just shows her level of consciousness and mm-hmm. willingness and wanting to be the best mom she can be mm-hmm. yeah that's dope because that's when most parents go off yeah yeah without that recognition of like i'm the safe space and i will hold space for you mm-hmm. but like yeah but yeah do you guys well you already said but do you feel you can do that with your own mothers <sighs> go off yeah. No, my mom. Really? Even at this age? Um, not that I can't like vent to her. First of all, whenever I do, I still feel bad. But my mom has a way of kind of playing the victim or kind of brushing off like whatever's happening. And it is very irritating to me. I have shared this with her. Um, so, no, I, I, I it's like I don't have a problem telling her how I feel. Mm hmm. 
but I certainly can't release it all because I know that it's going to fall on deaf ears. I have a question. Yeah. Is that just specific to your dynamic with her? Or do you feel like you also too are like her outside of your dynamic with her? Like, in like a, do I kind of explain things away the way that she does? Yes. To others? I, I, do I? Are you shaking your head? Really? What? Well, no, I just think- Not in a negative way. Like, like you- what I heard is that your mom is not fully acknowledging uh-huh. the things that you're saying to her that is yeah, frustrating sure. her. Yeah. I would say you may have picked up the ability to what to what to me that is saying is your mom is not fully acknowledging mm-hmm. whatever's happening. Mm-hmm. Like she is just kind of like let's get past it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think that you do that in a way where you mm-hmm. don't fully acknowledge what's happening to you. Mm -hmm. And you will explain it away Mm -hmm. to your own self. Like Mm -hmm. you're not listening to your own feelings and your own. Yeah. Like watching you watch your house burn down and you'd be like, it's fine. It didn't burn down. It did not burn down. But it burnt. It was a little, (laughs) it was was a little smoky. (laughs) But you were like the chippiest I have ever seen you in my entire life. There goes my dresses. Girl, she hung up the phone. I called her back. Like, do you need me to come over? She's like, no, it's fine. My house is on fire. So I'm like, I will be there in five seconds. She was just like, fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. Everything's fine. No, this is this is facts. Yeah. So you kind of. But what? But okay. But she get on my nerves. So how do I fix this? Like what? Oh. Because in, in those times for mm-hmm. me, yeah. right? Because the difference is I'm referring to like when I'm telling her about herself exactly. and she's like, ah, eh, whatever. Mm. But like for me, it's like all I can do to focus on not unraveling. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's because like everyone's alive. A house is just that. a house, maybe, you know? Yeah, maybe your mom's doing that with you. She does do that. Maybe she, and I don't know. Yeah. Just trying to think about our mothers, the time they grew up, them the things that your mom has probably experienced, a divorce, you know, Lots your of father things. passing away, so like cool. all the feelings she may have of all of that that yeah. she's probably never fully de- dealt with. She was just trying to survive, be a good mom to you guys, make sure you still had a good life. Maybe she just does not know how to acknowledge You're right. and that it is You're so totally right. uncomfortable. The only reason why is my mom is the exact same way. Yeah. Same. Same my exact way. Same. Yeah. You're it's totally just right. so infuriating. They do not want to go there. They're just like, okay, okay. Yeah. I hear you, but I don't care. And we're going to move forward. Like I'm still your mom. I love you. And whatever I did doesn't matter. I'm going to do it again tomorrow. And, <laughs> and it's giving, we, you've been talking to her. It's giving, it's, <laughs> it's giving. my mom too. <laughs> and you know what? That, that, that to that part of like working on ourselves for our children Working on ourselves for our mothers is also a thing. Girl, like, yeah. The therapy that I'm in is not just for my daughter. Like, it's for me, mm-hmm. but it's for my relationship with my mother. Like, I literally the other day had to mother my mother. Mm-hmm. And it was really interesting to be in that position. And I realized, oh, I'm in therapy for the both of us. Mm. My mom is not going to therapy. She's not going to. My mom she, goes. I just want to say that. Oh, amazing. Yeah, she goes. She's My mom has just made, you know, she's made the... And, and, and again, you get into a space of being one way your whole life. Yeah. It's terrifying to try to be anything else. So it's just like, mm-hmm. I have to change my response to yeah. it. Yeah. So yeah. when you're like, oh, if my mom is, she's just brushing by. It's like, you want her to acknowledge, you want her to change. You want her to be better, do better because you know the benefit of that. Mm-hmm. But she ain't going to do nothing that she don't want to. Yeah. And so that's the place that I too had to get to with my mom. And so now I just listen and I have more compassion. Yeah. And I have more tools that I want to carry for myself to be able to handle some of those challenging relationships. Yeah. Mother, brother, father, <laughs> friends, children, husband, whatever it yeah. is. Because the self-work only benefits you. Yeah, in, in those, in those I do think about this, too, because you say compassion. I imagine the work you're doing now, right? And it's because what's the funniest thing about our parents is that our mothers raised us to be the people we are now mm. from whatever work little bit of work that they did. If you look at your family tree and you're like, oh, my mom is not like my grandma Oof, or the people yeah. that raised her. So I think it also comes down to, I'm imagining myself being 60 years old and Azara or Amir calling me trying to tell me about myself. <laughs> or try, and I'm thinking of all the, <laughs> the things, things that I, I did, did yeah, right. to get to, and all the things I did to get them to where they're at. And them because calling me. How dare you? Yeah. So I think a little <laughs> bit of it, well, my dad already told me, he was like, it is so infuriating when you try to tell me Mm. as your father who to be and what to be Mm. and what I should and shouldn't be doing but we see it's like you when you are on the other side all the knowledge and information that you have it just doesn't matter when someone's not over there with you Mm -hmm. it just becomes a talking 
head. Mm -hmm. And I try to have compassion knowing that even though I know I'm right, it just doesn't even matter. Mm -hmm. Because this is my mom and she's like, girl, I did the best I could. That part. And we're doing the best we can. And one day, Kaya and Brooks and Aristotle and Azara and Asia, they're all going to call us and try to tell us something about ourselves. And we're going to be like, we had a whole podcast. Right. (laughs) I was in therapy. Right. And we still (laughs) going to... the tape. (laughs) (laughs) Roll the video. (laughs) (laughs) And we still did something wrong. And they're still going to know more than us. And they're going to have more access and be more enlightened than us. And we ain't going to want to hear that shit. But you know what? I hope my children are more enlightened than me. For sure. I do. Yeah. We say that now. I don't want to be I don't want to be threatened by it, but I think with each generation, I think we become more receptive to understanding that it's just evolution. It just happens. And that's what you want, you know? Mm -hmm. Like my mom was not putting up with any of the shit that my grandmother did, and I'm not putting up with shit any of the shit that my mom put up with. Like it's just Yeah. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. Word. Word. Well, that was fun. I would say our children feel secure. What do you I think? hope so. I hope yeah, so. Yeah, I think so. I think we just learned that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey. Shout well, out that to was nerd. Um, Attachment a- Nerd. Attachment Nerd. By way of Cherise Sims. Shout out to Shout Cherise Sims. Cherise yes. be knowing she what to share. Knowing. Y'all follow her. Yes. And yes. listening to parenting. Listen to Parenting for the Culture. Yes. And she got an award. Let's shout her out. Was Yay! it for like podcasts of the mom year? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. She got podcast of the year from the Black Pod Awards. Yeah. Yay. Podcast of the year, Go child. Cherise. Yes. Cherise. That's dope. Cherise is the bomb. Mm-hmm. We um, have the same birthday. Really? We do? We're both born on the 4th of July. <gasps> I didn't oh, even realize yeah, I that. Never, I didn't realize it either. Oh, cute. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's why we love her so much. We love our little cancer girls. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Just well, mamas of the mama's den, driving in your cars or listening wherever you are, go find that post or, or write them things down and, and check yourself as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Daddies too. Yes. Daddies. And all the and women. And the aunties. With, yes. All the women all the without aunties. kids. Yes. How about everybody just check on yourself? <laughs> yes. Because this is relationships. It's yeah. not just parenting. Yeah. But I will say to the aunties though, like we need you yes. to also be aware of these things and mm-hmm. you know, love, mm-hmm. love it. All right, mamas. <laughs> Bye. We Bye. out.